This week, I thought I'd give you 10 tips of things which will really help to speed up your workflow when you're editing with Final Cut Pro. So, let's get into it. The first one is when you've finished importing all your clips, you don't really need to have this window open. So, you use the key command, Control Command 1, which will close it, and then Command 7, which will open your scopes. So that way, all this time when you're editing, you can be looking at your scopes and you don't have to be wasting space with that other window open. Now you can very easily change it by closing that and opening it again, but that just really saves up some screen space for when you actually get, when you get into the edit. Now the next one is something I only found out very recently and it's helped free up loads of space in my computer. So what you do is you select a, an old project that you're not using anymore and you go to delete project render files. Now this isn't actually deleting anything from the project, it's only deleting the render files which can be replaced very easily. So it frees up lots of space from all of those different renders that you've done. Now if you watch when I open this project, everything is still exactly how I left it, but it has the orange bar which shows that it needs to be re-rendered. And then you can re-render and delete the projects, re-render, delete the project files as many times as you want. But This is a really good way of saving space on projects that you're not using anymore. Okay, so next we have some navigation shortcuts. Now, these are really important because it really, really speeds up your workflow because you just use these all the time. So, the first one is to press the FN key, or function key, and left arrow key, and that will take you straight back to the start of the project. Really useful, I use this all the time, and it's a great way of getting you back to the start, which is something that I find myself doing all the time. Now, the next one is to press Shift Z, and that will zoom out to show your whole project. Because often when you're zoomed in, doing fine little editing, you want to be able to see the whole project. Shift Z, again, use that all the time. Now the other thing I did just then was I pressed Z and then I drew a box and that will then draw a box over where you want to zoom into. And then you toggle between the Z and A key, which will get you back into your normal cursor. So you can zoom in, press A key, and then you do editing and then press Shift Z, zoom out again very useful, saves you a lot of time. Now you can also press the H key, toggle between that and Z and A, and then you've got a really good way of maneuvering around the timeline. Another good way of maneuvering around the timeline is to use the arrow keys. So if I zoom into here, you can see that if I press the down arrow key, then it will jump to the next cut. Now this is really useful so you don't find yourself trying to line up the cursor exactly you just jump straight there with the arrow keys. And this is especially useful for if you're doing something like this, where you want to select these titles and cut them off right in time with a cut. So what I do is use the next tip, which is some other shortcuts. Now the first one is to press Command B. Command B is the blade tool and very useful, allows you to make a cut without having to drag and stuff. So yeah, the arrow key and the blade tool very useful. Now the next one is to press Command Shift G. So let's say I have a clip like this and I want to split apart all of the parts of the clip. So I press that and then it will show that I've got my video and I've got my audio. Now if the clip was more complicated then it would have all the other parts of the clip but really useful because then you can delete this or move it around or extend it and that's going to be pretty helpful to break apart the clip items. And the final shortcut in tip number four is the V key. Now the V key, you press V and it will disable that clip. So it grays it out and this is really useful for, let's say you wanted to just play it without any music, you can do that. Or it's basically an easy way of temporarily deleting something and bringing it back without it being too permanent. Okay, so the next tip is another one which I use all the time and what you do is let's say you've applied an effect to a clip so I've just put sharpen on this and I wanted it to be a sharpen of two then if I wanted to do this on all the clips I could do it individually the same thing but it's a lot easier to just press command C or copy and then select all your clips and then if you do edit paste effect paste attributes then you can paste sharpen or any of the other effects so that's pretty useful and again there's a shortcut for that which is command shift v so 
that's one of the cool things you can do. But also, let's say you wanted to paste everything about a clip, so not just one specific thing. So like say I wanted to do the color correction and the sharpening, I could just press Command C and then find the other clip and press Option Command V and that will do paste effects, which is essentially like ticking all of those boxes. It will just make those exactly the same in terms of the effects. So that's a really quick way of getting your effects across to other things. Okay, so the next tip is using compound clips. Now if you select clips and right click or press Option G, then you'll get a new compound clip. And this is pretty useful because what it enables you to do is to group clips together and treat them as one clip. So you can see these two have just become one. Now this is there's a lot of uses for this and it's also really useful that you can actually open up that by going open in timeline and then you can still make changes to the original quite easily. So that's very useful. The next one is probably a more well-known tip but this is so useful I thought I'd just share this with you guys. So what you do to synchronize audio from your audio recorder if you're running dual sync sound you select the camera audio you select your audio from the audio recorder and then you press right click synchronize clips or option command G and then that will create a new clip and it will listen to the audio and match them up automatically and you can see here it has a little time indicator which tells you that it's not ready yet it's still rendering it's still thinking about it so it's very important that you wait for that symbol to go away before you drag it into your timeline or else they won't be matched up okay so the next tip involves the magnetic timeline now Final Cut Pro has this really nice feature of the magnetic timeline which means that when you cut a clip like that you don't have to then move all of these clips in the way they just kind of follow it and this is called the magnetic timeline so it's a useful feature but you don't always want to use that so let's say you really liked the way that this piano lined up with the timing of the foot here and then when you make a change here everything behind it becomes out of sync with the music so the way you can avoid this is if you select all of your clips and right click and say lift from storyline then what it'll do is it'll put them above it and then if you bring the clips out and drop them back in again then it will break it out of this magnetic timeline and what you can do then is you can make changes to this clip and it will just leave a gap which means that your foot shot is still perfectly in time so that's really useful when you're cutting to music or if you just generally don't like the magnetic timeline okay so the next one is markers now markers have loads of uses but essentially what it is is while you're playing through your footage or on the timeline you can hit M and it'll put a little blue marker on the footage now this is really useful I use it as a kind of to-do list because you can basically just drop a marker whenever, wherever you need to do something so say you need to put a title in but you're not going to do it yet you just drop a marker there to say remember to do a title and you can even type in that you need to do a title if you want to but I tend to just use the marker as a reminder that I need to do something there and the final tip is something which I've again discovered only recently and has been really helpful so usually if you want to duplicate a clip you have to press command C and then command V and then it will sometimes put it on top of it and it'll sometimes put it in between your clips it's basically just not ideal but a much quicker way is if you just hold down the option key and click and drag away from it then it'll actually duplicate that clip and then you can put it directly above it if you want to and you can put it anywhere you want and I've found this to be super helpful use it all the time and uh, yeah that's a really useful tip which I don't think many people know about okay so that's it for this week hope these tips have been useful and uh, I'll see you next time